Oh, is it on? Yeah. It is on. It is on. It is noon. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where are we, guys? We're at Schuler's Books. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> it's like happy. Having said that, this is a collection. Three of the stories were published on your website, correct? Or they were like, published on tour.com. Okay. Yeah. And then there's three new <laughs> stories. Back yeah, these, chair. these chairs are making myself here. comfortable. Um, so, were there like specific fairy tales or mythology that inspired you on this? Like, was this? Yeah. How how did you decide to do um, like this sort of collection? Well, the f I talk a little about this in my author's note, but the first of the stories was the Witch of Duba, um, which I published back when I wrote Shadow and Bone, and um, it was inspired by Hansel and Gretel. It's very clearly inspired by Hansel and Gretel, um, which was this story that I was really freaked out by as a kid, and not because of the cannibal witch, who honestly I was pretty much okay with. <laughs> You have a house made of candy, I'm okay. You it's know. the parents, right? It's the dad. Yeah. Because the mom, the wicked stepmother, gets it, right? Oh, she's banished because she sent your children into the woods to die. Except he let her send them into the woods to die, not once but twice. And so the end of this story always really weighed me out. Like, I always felt like they should go and, like, I don't know, open up a bakery somewhere, or, you know, <laughs> run an Etsy shop, or whatever it was going to be. But they should not be going home to somebody who was either to cowardly or immoral to protect his own children. So that sense of unease that came from that story was what guided um, the Witch of Duba. And I think a lot of these stories were actually really just inspired by that feeling that you get from fairy tales where you're like, I'm really enjoying this fantastic wish fulfillment, but there's also a sense of wrongness. Like, this doesn't quite add up. So, yeah. Can we expect more of this sort of design work in your books? Or is that more... A fitting to the short story um, That's collection. really something that is, I think, fits the, the short stories. I think especially with my novels, there are a lot of things that really shouldn't be brought to life in art. <laughs> one of the reasons, like, we had a lot of people ask for a coloring book, and I was like, that feels so wrong. And I, I understand, like, Game of Thrones as a coloring book, you know, like, yes, yeah, yeah. um, but it just felt like the wrong fit for me for the world, so, um, yeah, I think that it really suits the stories, and I hope Sarah and I will, I have a little plan for Sarah and I to do a little extra something special for the holidays, so we'll see if it works out. Ooh. I think, I, think, I think they should do the coloring books, but they should do it with your face <laughs> and <laughs> like being John Malkovich, where just my face and everything. I would color that. I would that's that's what that. everybody wants. That's, that's what the demand is there. Sure. And you, like. So how did the idea for the Grisha Universe spark? Um, Grisha Universe. Okay, so. It didn't really start as the Grisha verse, right? It started as Shadow and Bone. I had wanted to be a writer my whole life. I had this really bad habit of writing like two chapters for first act and not getting past that. I'm really good at first acts. They're really easy, I love them. Um, but then I didn't know where to take the story because I hadn't learned to outline yet and I didn't know I was that kind of writer. Um, so then picture me, I used to be a makeup and special effects artist and um, the thing about being a makeup artist is around Halloween time, you get real popular. <laughs> like all of a sudden, all these friends are like, I really want to be Mystique, could you paint me blue? <laughs> and the answer is no, pay me. Um, so my solution to that was basically to leave town, which is my message to all of you children is to run away from your problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I would leave town every Halloween and um, one year I was up in the mountains and I, being the person that I am, my friends had gone into town to, um, I don't, don't know what, to be social. And I <laughs> stayed behind to read my book. I don't remember what book it was, um, but I fell asleep reading it. And when I woke up, the room was pitch black. I mean, and I mean like, I'm from Los Angeles. It never gets really dark there, okay? This was country dark, not city dark, where like you cannot see your hand in front of your face. And I wake up with my heart pounding and I swear I can hear somebody breathing in the room. And I'm like, I'm, I'm about to get murdered. Okay? <laughs> because as we all know, serial killers wait for you to wake up. <laughs> and then they kill you. They want to feel the fear. That's right, that's right. They want to sleep. What kind of amateur crap is that? So. <laughs> So I wake up, I am terrified. I don't know where the kitchen is. I don't know where the light switches are. I, I have no weapon in them. <laughs> so I 
took my shoe off. <laughs> and I was like standing in the living room, like, come at me. And nobody did. I lived to tell the tale. I mean, maybe he was just really freaked out. <laughs> like, oh, woman with a shoe. Yeah, and the lecturer was like, never mind. <laughs> Backing away, she's crazier than I am. So, um, yeah, so I. I was totally terrified, but then I turned on every light in the house and like locked every door and checked every closet and under every bed. And as I was getting ready to go to sleep that night, I could not get the idea out of my head that like no matter how old you are or how smart you think you are, we never really outgrow our fear of the dark, right? It's always there. You think you're cool, and then you're like, like on a lovely camping trip, and you're like, wow, these woods are darker than I remember. You know? There's that sort of gap between the trees where you just expect something to come out, or you go to sleep and you see the closet doors open just a crack. You know, like there are these moments when you remember this fear, this primal fear of the dark, and I thought, well, what if darkness was a place? And you couldn't turn the lights on, and you had to fight the monsters that were living there on their own territory. And uh, you know, how, where, what would they look like from years evolving in the dark? And how would you fight them? Why would you go in there in the first place? And I couldn't put these questions away. And those ideas became the shadow fold. And that was what led to the story of Shadow and Bone. Mealy, <laughs> you're so awkward. <laughs> you're so awkward. I mean, your chips. No, I'd like to try to figure out what I first get. What's up? It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Guess what, guys? We just got back, or we're leaving, the Lee Bardugo signing. And I said the name right. <laughs> hey! It's because hey. in my review, I did not say the name right. So stop with the hate, y'all. What's going to happen? Where, would it, where are we going? Um, We are thinking about getting tattoos of, of the Six of Crows Drug tattoo. tattoo. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you guys updated, bros. Peace out, Bye. YouTube. Picture. It's swag. It is. It's Liddy. I here's it, Kenzie's. I don't know if I'll be able to see that. Yeah. It kind of hurt. Here's Daria's. Oh, <laughs> kind of hurt. Daria apparently like a champ. Daria didn't. Hers didn't hurt. <laughs> mine was like a four. It wasn't. Okay, mine was like a five. Yeah, mine was like yeah. a four. It wasn't yeah. much worse. I just am very dramatic yeah, in how I handle pain. Yeah. So I was there was a lot of. <sighs> It definitely hurt more than my piercings, but I was I was there for emotional support and I was the photographer. Yeah. <laughs> At Hailsy Elf on Instagram. Thank you. Wait, really? <laughs> oh my god. That's awesome. I mean, what? He was totally we against. Should, no, the entire she, she was talking about like he was talking about how the government was watching us through our phones. And I was like, <laughs> shit, all I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, my dad went and saw a jazz band. He's like, jazz? So like, he's like, jazz ain't shit. <laughs> he was like, why do you want that tattoo? Are you gonna leave? That's a thing. <laughs> I hate you. Like, you're gonna like, keep that. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah, we got tattoos. It was really fun and really painful yes. and really, really <laughs> impulsive. Really, but I'm really, really, really glad we did it. Woo. And yeah, I'm gonna say really in every fucking sentence. Yeah, because it's really, really cool. And <laughs> yeah. And was it was a good day. It was a great day. I got to meet Lee Bardugo. I got three of my books signed. I got a picture with her. Really wild. I get to hang out with your best friend, Haley. Yeah, that was that was the fifth one. God. <laughs> <laughs> I got a chat.
too, and I guess I got to hang out with my best friend Haley. And Daria. And Daria. I'm here. Okay, but, but I'm Daria like instantly counts. Like I enjoy hanging out with her. Hey. <laughs> so you're just like a uh, I'm an add-on? Yeah, you're an add-on. <laughs> you're an add-on. <laughs> I love it. I'm kidding. I'm her best friend, guys, I promise. Ow! Oh, <laughs> Follow me at Hailsy Elf on Instagram. No, I told you that. sorry, gonna edit that out. Yeah, I said it already earlier. <laughs> what? When? I don't know, I'm telling you. Okay. I think it's a great, <laughs> great show. Yeah, all right, that is it. I will show you guys a picture. Can you even see me? I'll show you guys a picture of the final project, like on my skin uh, tomorrow. So yeah, bye. Woo! Hey guys, it's Kenzie. Um, so this is kind of just like a wrap up of my Lee Bardugo. Uh, signing that I went to. Um, I did promise that I'd show you guys my my tattoo that I got. Um, so here's that. Totally awesome. I love it so much. Um, it was totally impulsive and I know that. All of my tattoos have been impulsive and so I feel like that's just how I gotta keep doing it because I love all of my tattoos for the most part. I mean... There's one that I'm not like a huge fan of, but let's be honest, this is, this is Six of Crows. This is the Dregs tattoo, and I feel like you can't really go wrong with the Dregs tattoo. <laughs> I kind of a wrap up of my day, I guess. I got to meet Lee yesterday. Um, she is phenomenal. She's gorgeous. She's beautiful. She's everything I want to be. I'm wearing my black lipstick right now because she just inspired me to rock the whole like goth look. Um, so I am, and I love it. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll tell you guys a little bit about the books um, that I got and I got signed. Um, funny thing, I actually forgot my copy, my like my copy of Six of Crows in Chicago. Um, so I actually had to go to Barnes and Nobles right before the event and buy a copy of Six of Crows because I knew that was the one that I wanted her to sign. So. <laughs> I have a brand new copy of Six of Crows that I basically have to mark up all over again. Um, but I got Six of Crows signed. That one is especially like made out to me. I also got Crooked Kingdom signed. And I got Language of Thorns signed. Um, that was what this whole like signing was for, was the release of Six or was the release of the Language of the Thorns. Uh, if you guys haven't gotten it yet, go and buy it. It is it's so beautiful, you guys. Every every page has an illustration, um, and the illustrations are marvelous. The text is different colors. The illustrations are different colors. I feel like I'm getting shaky. Um, <laughs> but it is so good, and uh, I know that earlier in this video, I have a couple clips of Lee answering questions about it, and they're as awesome as she described it and as awesome as it seems i would really suggest going and getting it um on top of all of that funness funness on top of all that funness i also bought the three books in the Grisha trilogy. Um, I haven't read this series yet, so, and I know that I really want to. I'm going to do that. I'm going to read it um, right after I finish Crooked Kingdom. For some reason, it's just like taking me a while to finish it just because I started a new job and <sighs> homework is piling up and I need to make videos and so... Yeah, I will finish Crooked Kingdom, <laughs> but I do plan on reading the Grisha Trilogy next, and I got the new covers, and so, like, they're even prettier than the original ones, and so I'm really excited, um, but, yeah, I'm also a little, I'm, you know, I'm a little hesitant. I've heard a couple mixed reviews about the Grisha Trilogy, but I, like, I'm, like, really excited to see what my thoughts are on them. Oh, also, I, um, they're also giving out pins at the signing, so I got one pin that's all black and it says monster on it, and then I got another pin that's blue and it says mermaid on it, and that's just kind of like, um, these are the types of characters and stories you can find in the language of thorns, um, and so I'm really excited. Um, I feel like my, 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 ooh, I feel like my friend got another pin that was like yellow. I don't know what it said on it though, but it was pretty. They're like a cool like matte material, like really soft. I don't 
Yep. I really hope you guys liked my first vlog ever. This is actually, yeah, this is the first time I've ever vlogged. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm hoping to at least get one more vlog in this month. I have a signing with Rick Riordan next weekend in Wisconsin. Um, so hopefully I will see some of you guys there. Um, if you are there please stop and say hi i would love to talk to you guys you'll be in my video um <laughs> but yeah that's it for this video um leave a comment down below subscribe see you guys love you